I'm going to count one, two, three and start in. I'll bring you in first. When I go like this, you start. <laughs> now, don't do that. No monkey business now. We're serious. All right, right, right. Right, uh, right, right. Shoot. 31st of May, 1990, interview Tom Akuhata. Mm. I told you to take me to a day. I'm here for two. The hunger, if I go on my end, can a bit of the corridor. I've got a man, my attire, he told you, or that I would be more. A pan, ya tangaro, ya papa tunuku, ya rang ya papa, ya tane mahut. Hoyano, Jorogoto. The me to a day. I've got a man, my he told you, or tangaro, me on Fanango Maha. Ara timata mai ia arang ia papa. Ia papa tua nuku te whenua, tāne mahu te te matua te ngahere. Me ngā hau e whā, hau tonga, hau auru, hau parero, hau moana. Nā kua taeta tau ki te moana nui ākiwa. Hoi anō, haere ngā whakamara. Ko huri i te reo o tau iwi. Outlining the history of Tangaroa, the sea god, and his relations, Rangyapapa, the sky, the sun, the moon, Papatunuku, the mother earth, and Tane Mahuta, the god of the forest. And the four winds, Hautongo to the south, Hauaru to the west, Hauparero to the north, Haumono to the sea. In other words, the wind of the Rafiti from the rising sun to the east. <clears throat> Number three, now, I can't, now to continue with this information, concerning the uh, creation of our creator of all the things on this earth for us the human race to look after if we don't and let money be our god and we abuse all this wonderful heritage of mother nature there will be nothing left for the generations to come <clears throat> now when we look at the map that has been drawn for the purpose of the history and the heritage of the people of our world war it's very, very important for this generation to know how the people of the past looked after the gift from our forefathers handed down to them from the, as caretakers for all these rich resources from the ocean and also from the uh, forest. <clears throat> Number four, now we look at the map carefully again, it's a great achievement of our people of the past to be able to use the gift of Mother Nature to be able to navigate their fishing grounds very accurately without instruments, no compass, no theory light, no education. What a wonderful gift to use Papa Tūnuku, Mother Earth, as their sextant to pinpoint their fishing grounds deep in the ocean. This understanding, the things of Mother Nature, has been handed down from generation to generation. What a gift! Five, I hope the young people of today take note of all this history of our people of the past, as I have been talking about Papa Tūnuku, Mother Earth, now I come on to the Ranga Papa, the sky, the sun and the moon. Without these things there will be no life on Earth. The sun controls the temperature of the ocean and the moon controls the movement of the sea, giving us a tidal control of the ocean. And now, Tane Mahuta, the god of the forest, the native trees, in the bush naming some which works with Tangaro, the god of the sea. For instance, naming Kaikatea, Puketea, Kohai, and Pohutukawa, and many others, all work with Tangaro, give us a sign to harvest certain seafood from Tangaro. Now I have come to the end of all this history of Mother Nature. Now, from here on, I'll display the. Uh, I'll display the uh, the map to be able to be photographed on the video uh, for your people to look at while I come off this topic of talking about the um, historical um, information about our people of the past, how they pinpoint their fishing grounds down in the ocean. Now on the map. Here, which has been drawn, the 
map they have been drawn there showing or indicating the uh, fishing grounds and the names of the grounds. And that, what I read just a while ago, that's what I'm talking about. They use the landmarks to be able to pinpoint their fishing grounds. Now, without all these um, yeah. landmarks, they won't be able to pinpoint these fishing grounds. But to me, the great achievement of the old people of the past, to be able to find all these uh, fishing grounds, on top of it, they cared for it, they look after it. Being handed down from generation to generation right up to this present gen generation now, that's talking a few hundred years back. And now, money has come forward, now it's really destroying the whole thing, as far as I'm concerned. So it's very, very important for the people to take note of what I'm talking about. Let's get together and look after it. And this all go, also go for the uh, native forest, the native bush. <coughs> now the um, talking about the native bush, it has its importance also, very, very important to the human people, the human race. Now our Maori people, going back again to the uh, generations back, our people never had doctors like what they've got today. I'm talking about medication. Our people use Mother Nature, Mother Nature's creation, talking about herbalist medicine. As we're very much aware of it, the things of Mother Nature, that is the creation of all things to mankind. Man can't create anything without Mother Nature's gift, and that's the real understanding of all these things. Now, for instance, I'll be displaying a different variety of native trees from the bush and what they do, what they're used for. And this is where it's very, very important for our generation to come, generations to come, to look after this native bush. Now, I'm very pleased that the people down the South Island going against the uh, cutting of the uh, native bush in that area. And I hope the same thing will go here in North Ireland, because it's very, very important indeed. Now, I'll expand a bit more on this point. Uh, just last night I was watching the television there, where in Russia they're having a bit of trouble with food and all that. Same thing, medication. They're not getting any treatment. Well, we're getting the same issue now present-day generation is having the same difficulty as far as medical attention because the uh, the cut of the government now is making things really bad for the ordinary people. Now I think to me I'm quite prepared to outline all this gift from Mother Nature, from the bush, because this is our next step. Go back to it to the uh, Mother Nature, as far as I'm concerned. Because I've been through it in my lifetime when I was a young man. That's how I knew all these uh, shrubs, because we were brought up on it. And we found that nothing wrong while well, I'm hitting the age of 71. I'm still fit yet. A lot of them today living on pills, they've gone crazy. So that's the difference, side effects. But this herbalist medicine, there's no side effects. So we'll start off on the mamaku. Now, I'm holding a mamaku in my hand. I'll talk about it. A lot of our people, older people, understand the mamaku. <clears throat> the mamaku, the fern tree uh, family, there's different variety of fern tree. Now, the mamaku is this one I'm holding here. This is the one we use for medicine. And also, you've got the kapunga. Kapunga looks the same, but hasn't got the same use as this one. And you've got the uh, feki. The feki is a different type of fern tree again. What the Maori people, the old people, use it for, they use it for, for lining kumara pits in there. Keep the warmth and the dampness out of it. Somebody familiar to this pink bat they're talking about. That's our pink bat. We use Mother Nature's pink bat. So that's what the uh, feki is used for. And the kapunga, they use that for uh, fencing around the uh, pass. But this mamaku, 
they use it for med medication. And of course, you've got the Kyo Kyo, there's a different type of fern again. They all got names. Some people, you ask them, they say fern tree, fern tree, fern tree. No, no, no. They all got names, just like a human being. We all got names. Otherwise, if we got the one name, we get all mixed up. So, I am pleased that this thing has been photographed and talked about. So, the usage of this, what I'm holding in my hand, you can boil it and drink the water. No side effect whatsoever. It sort of balances the, uh, the blood system. And not only that, it does remove a lot of parasites in the system, in the body. And also the gel is used widely by the old married people. You find in the center of the core here, if I scratch it, you see the slime coming up. Now, there. That slime, that's med medicine. That's used for poultice. See, when the old people get boils or whatever, sores on the surface of the skin, or skin uh, cancer, whatever it is, I think the old people use this widely because it's a very penetrating medication. I've seen a blind boil, blind boil, the practice of uh, operating a blind boil, they cut it with a knife to open it up. But with this, you don't use nothing, no knife no whatsoever. And that's the use of the uh, momaku, very useful, useful plant. It's a beautiful tree to plant around the house. The mamaku. It's a fir tree. It's a picture of his own. And it's, it's a medicine for all times. Now, I can't stress any more on this uh, mamaku. That's enough for the time being on the mamaku. Oh, uh, just a little bit more before I go off. The mamaku, we have also here. Aloe vera. Now, aloe vera is the same family, by the look of it, like the lily family. It's got the same type of gel. It's got gel inside the aloe vera also. Yeah, there's a gel there, what I'm trying to get out. And this also is very, very effective for, for, for uh, surface uh, skin diseases and that. Women use it for cosmetic to beautify their face. Whether they beautify it or not, I don't know. But anyway, that's what they use. Same thing with this, with the mamaku. You can use the same principle, the same, use the same thing. But the history of the alloy, Vera, <clears throat> some people is aware of it, and some people is not. The significance of the uh, alloy Vera is written in the scripture, in the Bible, alloy Vera after the crucifixion of Jesus when he was taken off the cross. And Nicodemus, one of his apostles, followers, anoint him with the aloe vera gel, not olive oil. That's written in the Bible. Is that spot of the Bible? I don't know, but anyway, it's the part where after the crucifixion, before they wrapped him up to put him away into the cave, they used the aloe vera. Now, in the Hebrew translation of aloe vera, uh, to my understanding, encyclopedia, is the miracle plant. Now, aloe vera, very familiar to this one. This one here, you cut it, it weeps for a few seconds, and it heals itself. The same thing applies with the aloe vera, you see the point there. It weeps when you break it, a few minutes afterwards, it heals up. Instant healing, in other words. But some trees, they weep and weep and weep, but these don't. So that's the importance of these two, the aloe vera and the mamaku. Now, <clears throat> now I'm talking about the... Um, we call it purukam in the Maori language, uh, eucalyptus gum. Why I brought this up? This is very, very important also as a herbalist medicine. During the epidemic 1919, those days there weren't any doctors. Well, I was born around about that time during the epidemic. 
And that was the biggest world epidemic they ever had, was the flu, right through that whole world. And my parents brought me up, told me all about the medication they used to look to get the young people out, the young children out of it, get them out of their sickness. What they used to do, they have a tent and they put earth around it to close it all up, airtight. And they boil these leaves, these blugum leaves, blugum, boil it, and they use the ashes and take it into the tent and keep the blugum water hot, continuous. And they keep stirring it while the children lie in the tent, inhaling the uh, medication from the uh, blugum. And a lot of children saved by this during the epidemic. So therefore, these very, very valuable plants, all these shrubs. So if anybody listening in, take note of it and use it. It costs nothing. Now, <clears throat> what I'm showing you here is crapper. Yeah, there's the cracker. A uh, lot of the old people are aware of these cracker trees. It's a fruit, it's berries with the yellow, yellow berries on it. The Maori people used it a lot in the old days. Uh, I was brought up on it because during our time, during the slump in the 1930s, we couldn't afford to buy lollies, so the old people used to boil the cracker berry and use it for peanuts. Now, to be able to, to use this uh, cracker berry, you've got to know how to, how to boil it, how to cook it, and when to cook it. Because they, uh, they are poison. If you don't uh, treat it right, they won't look after you. So that's the cracker berry. We live on it. We have nothing else to eat, we live on the cracker berry. Uh, now I'll go further now. This is the, the Pūdiri uh, leaves. The Pūdiri used widely by our people for preserving kawai. Now this, this art is disappeared completely now. The generation today, the people today, depends too much on the deep freeze. Now, <clears throat> talking about preserving kawai, if any present-day generation people today, if somebody cooked the kawai in the hangi and used the puri leaves to create the uh, steam for cooking in that, they'll never taste a better fish in their lives for the simple reason. Kawai, you got to know how to cook a kawai, how to treat a kawai to get the uh, good taste out of it. Now, Put a car away, any fish, you put them in a deep freeze, you lose the taste, just like meat, you lose the goodness of it. But preserving it in the uh, leaves, the puri leaves, it holds the texture, the salt, natural salt in the fish, never disappear. Now, I expand a bit more about this uh, puri pres preservation of kahawai fish. During the war, while we were in the Middle East, we used to get a lot of uh, kawai sent home from home here over the Middle East. And boy, it was a life, lifeline. Save, save a, lot of, uh, a lot of our boys never go hungry because the fish, when it's been preserved in, in Puliti, in the army, flies never touch them. That's unusual. You can have it carried around with you and the flies never come near it. There's something chemical in this puridi that does it and it gives a taste and at the same time uh, you eat a fatty kawai it doesn't react on you because there's some chemical in here this is the only leaves I know that are used widely for preserving fish kawai is the puridi leaves so this is very important about these things they don't use any, any type of trees or leaves. They use a certain leaf for a certain thing. Now, that's what they use for the, uh, preser preserving the uh, kahawai fish on the hangi.
the now, now I'm going to talk about the Rangiora. This comes from the bush also, as you can see here in front of me. The Rangiora. This plant, when it's flowering in November, the old people always warn us out in our time, don't ever touch any hives, wild hives in the bush. Don't bring any honey from there, don't touch it. You can't get near it anyway because the bee, at this time, they go mad. They go absolutely mad when, they, when they're when pollinating on this Rangiora flowers. They go crazy and they go you no matter what you, you can't get near it. But what I'm trying to say, the funny thing, the Rangiora is deadly poison in November. And yet, we use the same leaves to preserve the tapara. Now, this is the Chetia family. That's a photo of it. That's the tapara I'm holding in my hand. Now, it's unusual. When you come to think of it, it's poison. And yet, this is the only leaf the old people use it for fermenting. The tapara, to get the juice so they can drink the water, like beer. That's their beer. They drink that stuff out of the tapara. Now, that's unusual. It's poison to have to eat the honey from the bush, and yet you use the poison to kill the poison. Unusual, isn't it? So this, this is this, uh, very, very important to have a good look at it. It's a broad leaf with a silver bottom, and that's the tapara, what you're looking at. Now, there's two types of fruit you get on the trees of the tapara, on the kit here. There's a tapara, and after the tapara is a tilde. The teure is like a corn cob. You remove all the seedlings off it, it leaves you just a bare honey, sweet. And the old people use that for colds, you know, throat trouble, anything like that. It's all medication because the bees been pollinating different plants from the bush and then you're getting your medicine straight away. So that's the importance of all this. Mm. Tap you? Not too much tapping, mate. Eh? <laughs> Getting too close for tapping. Now, now, now. <laughs> Quiet now. Serious. Um, now we continue with our program. This is the uh, Karangu plant. Karangu is what we use widely for uh, Kumurakau. That's for preserving kumaras. Same thing, it's done on the hangi. Now, see the difference again. The, we use the, the, uh, the karangu for the kumara and the, um, the pūdiri for the fish. You can't use the pūdiri for the kumara. You've got to use this one, the one the plant I'm holding here. Because this plant, it gives the uh, dark color for the kumara and it leaves a beautiful taste. And secondly, thirdly, it preserves the kumara. Kumara won't get rotten, it lasts for lasts for lasts forever. And you don't need a freezer or anything. This is the advantage of all these uh, all these plants. So that's a, that's the karamu. Have a good look at it, little berries on it. Don't look at me, look at the plant. Thank you. Now you're going to make us jump around on our tape now. No, you don't. <laughs> yeah, we can just... Oh, you mean to say... Be... It'll be hard for us to eat it. We've got to go right to that pot and bring well, that just corner... Just get the scissors and cut and do it up. <laughs> Give me that. <laughs> we have to go right to the end and bring all that cut and we talk back to where you first started. Give me the other plant. Now... Hang on. Yep. Yeah. Now we're back onto this karamu again. I forgot about the uh, medication plant uh, part. See, we're talking about using it also for medicine, boil it and drink the juice and that. Now, as I spoke before, it is for kumurakau. 
Now all the goodness out of this plant is being absorbed by the Kumra. So therefore, we look at it another way. The old people do the Kumra call. You eat the Kumra and also getting the medication from the plant. But as we know, we use it also for medication because some people have Kumra, some people don't. So they use the uh, Kumra call for medicine. That's for uh, blood disorderly or whatever, or parasite in the stomach, whatever. As I say, a lot of these plants, they got their, their own work to do in the body, as far as I'm concerned. But there's no side effect. There's one thing about it. It doesn't affect anybody. They're easy to take. Not like uh, medicine being done, chemically treated and all that. Take some taking, either bitter or too sour, you can't drink it. But this stuff here, you can drink it quite easy. So that's that one. Now we go on to the, um, to the bird life in the bush. We talk about the kidney room, for example. Kedidu birds, uh, we already have taken photographs of the palm beetle. Should have spoken now, eh? Yeah. I wouldn't cough so much. Mm. <clears throat> um, now we go on to the um, the bird life in the forest, native forest. We're talking about the um, the kedidu, for instance, um, which we have already uh, live telecasts of the uh, the trees we were looking at through the gorge, the palm mural, as we're all aware, the mural they soon be blooming sometime next month they start blooming and then they get fruit on it and that's the fruit the uh, pigeons live on, it. they thrive on it, they thrive on the mural berries. Now when they're on the mural they really get fat. Now it's a funny thing about this uh, history about these birds the uh, Keridu pigeon in Paya. When they leave the mirror, when they come off the mirror, they go onto the pheno. Now, the pheno is what I'm holding in front of me. Here, we're just talking about those pigeons living on the uh, mirror. They really get fat when they're on the mirror berries sometime next month and month afterwards. Now, the wonderful thing about them is when they leave the mirror trees, they go straight onto the pheno. And this is the plant I'm holding in front of me, pheno. They eat the leaves. And the moment they start eating pheno leaves, overnight they go skinny. You know, there's something, some chemical in these native trees that does that to this bird life. I mean, reducing their fatness, taking it off their body. So there must be something in it. Uh, I would like to say, I would like to experiment on this. On the pheno leaves, whether to boil it, get the juice and feed it on some of these fat people to reduce their size. So I think it works if we try and uh, use it. Somebody will use it anyway. It's quite safe because not many pigeons die off this loss. But this is the pheno plant. Now, it reduced the size of the, uh, the fatness of the uh, pigeon. The funny thing, as soon as they start bearing fruit, they drop their fruits, it fattens wild pigs. It's just the opposite. So that's, that's the uh, history of the uh, pheno tree, which is what I'm holding in front of me. 
Now, uh, what we have here is a branch of the uh, kohai, kohai tree. Uh, this is the wild kohai. There's uh, another variety of kohai, what they call uh, ngutukaka, or whatever it is. They got different variety, but this is the one with the yellow flowers. And this one, this is the one that when it blooms, it gives us the time, uh, the beginning of the harvesting of the kinas. Now, it's wonderful how Mother Nature works from the land, from Tane Mahuta to the sea, as I was talking about previous to this. The kohai comes on, it gets the yellow flowers. Now, when you get the kinas, you see the tongues of the kinas, the row is yellow also, same color. Now, after this, after the kohai, that's when the pohutuko start to come on. It's a reddish flower. And the tongue of this kina, the row, turns the same color. So there's the connection between Tane Mahuta and Tangaro. Oh, he used also uh, this plant, the kohai. We use it widely during the old days. They use it for uh, um, broken bones. Boil the bark. The old people used to boil the bark. Now, when they're removing the bark of a tree, the old people know how to do it. You can ring bark a tree and kill it. But what the old people used to do, they bark the tree itself and they stagger the bark in to let the sap go through. Otherwise, the, the tree will die off. See, our people had more understanding of Mother Nature than what they are today. They cut all this timber down, the, these trees down for timber. Or they're knocking about when they're falling, taking trees out of the forest. They got no respect. But our people, they care for these things. They take the bark off and they don't continue ring barking it because you'll kill it. Automatically cut the, uh, the lifeline of water the set, the plant. So that's what it's all about. I think this is the uh, Superjack family, by the way. Looking at the plant, it's the coho. It is the uh, very familiar, the Superjack. Superjack is also uh, got a history of his own, but we haven't got a plant here to show you people, but a lot of Maori people are aware of it, that they, the, uh, the shape of the vines are very familiar to the Subojak. This is the Kawakawa. Boil it two hours, longer the better, slow boiling, to get the sap out of it, extraction of the sap to get the, uh, the best of it. That's for medication. The same thing is for uh, internal trouble, stomach trouble, whatever it is, or, well, the whole body, as far as I'm concerned, because I've taken some and it got no side effect whatsoever, but it does a lot of good, um, blood-wise and so forth, because uh, when I used to be on it, I go to the doctor for blood tests and all that, very good, normal. No high blood pressure, no low pr blood pressure either, nothing. Just even all the way. I think this is, uh, this is the reason Man is not depending on too much of man-made things. We're living on Mother Nature's gift. That's how I look at it. And it's a very good thing to have. So there's the koho. Now, here we have a common plant. We, they call it, tatramu. Now we call it tatramu. That's how married people call it. And our children in our time used to use the eat a lot of these berries. They, when they ripe, turn red. The kids used to go and get it and eat it. Now, today they're using it for syrup. They use it for medication for children. The same thing. It may be a thistle with thorns on, but by Craig is a lifesaver sometimes. Now they look your though. Next one. That's it. Oh, that's one. Um, here's another one here. This is the titoki. Titoki plant. Now the titoki, they get berries on them. Uh, red berries. 
with the uh, little black button in the centre. We the kids used to eat it a lot. After school, during our time, there's no bread at home, well, we're going to have some tea to eat. And it's all medication, as far as I'm concerned, because it never ever affected any of us. But uh, we use it, we eat it, and that's the importance of the tea to eat. Now, here in front of me, we have two noxious weeds, they call it, or noxious trees, or whatever, manuga. One is a manuga, one is a kanuga. Now, all these years they've been chopping them down, burning them, chopping them, burning them. Now, it's been found just recently, while we are aware of it, we use it for bath water. We boil it in the bath, in the copper, and use it for bath water. It leaves a beautiful scent in your, on your body. Now, now what they're doing, they've got a machine to extract the oil out, out of it, out of the kanuga. The kanuga, white flower. Manuga, red flower. That's the difference between the two. Now, the kanuga, the one they use widely now for, uh, medic, for uh, cosmetic. <coughs> um, I believe in Australia they, um, they're planting them in rows and using a machine to pick the uh, leaves off. So they're not noxious weed after all. They got their use. Everything the Creator has given us in this world has a use. Everything, no matter what it is. So, therefore, whoever listening in or looking into this program, to make sure that you're part of of the uh, conservationists look after these things. Don't let people destroy it because it's very, very important. The things are getting that costly now. We, the ordinary people, will end back onto this again. So get as much as you can and write it down in your notebook what's been displayed here. And I hope next time I meet your people again, there'll be more of this national gift from God for us to use be displayed. Um, I think it's about the last we have, isn't it? Oh no, there's two more, that's right. Um, right in front of me here, these plants I've got in my hand here, it's a propolo, propolo plant that's been used for um, bathing. What we do, we boil it in the copper and hop in for a bath. And whoever listening in, you try it. You feel 100% better. As far as the stiffness or fix in your body, muscle, muscular pains, and you find it's different, absolutely different. So, cost nothing. It's only a weed. Get it, boil it, hop in it. But not leave it, make it too hot because you'll be hopping out quick. It's a funny thing, I talk about that. Myself, my experience of this, the protocol. They boil it, I put my hand in, in the tub, lukewarm to me. But when you hop in, it's a different story. There is something magnetic inside the, uh, in the, in the shrub itself. The ticklish sensation is really, you know, really hot, and yet it's cold. The water is cold, unusual. No, it's a medication penetrating through your old age bones. That's how I do it. So anybody with my age, at my age, get it. Have a bath, boy. You'll be a fit man. Now, we come to this one. Now, there's a book there, no? There's a book there one. There's a book there, yeah. Now, here we have my hand here now. There's a book there. Uh, a lot of the old people know about this tree, book there. We use a lot of it for battens. Uh, the Pukatea barks, when the old people were doing um, uh, kekia, getting kekia for, uh, for the meeting houses and that in my time, as a young man, the old people used to tell us to go and get the barks of this particular tree, 
and they boil it and get it for coloring. They get that uh, pingo color, yellowish color, yellow, deep yellows or reddish color. That's where it come from, from this tree I'm holding my hand. But to see the actual tree itself, you see the difference. But I mean, this is the, uh, the puget that we use. Use it for battens and use it for coloring, coloring uh, flax, kekia and all that. So um, I think I've got one more to go by the look of it. Um, now this particular one, this is only a weed, what you're looking at, the, the broom. They call it a weed anyway because they grow along the road and they chop it up and burn it. But this is the uh, broom, used widely of course for medicine. I know they boil it and drink the juice and they reckon it's good for your bomb, for your system, for your blood or whatever. Everything they do with the body, these herbalist medicine are useful because uh, being used widely by our, by our people. But uh, I don't know whether this come under the, uh, the Tane Mahuta issue or not. I think could have been um, immigrants from somewhere else, weed. But still, we still use it and it's quite good. Nothing wrong with it. Now here I have in front of me here is the bottle. It's not beer, not wine. Now that's been in this bottle here for about six, seven months now. And this come, the extraction of this been boiled from violet flower. And I believe it's very, very strong medi medication for your same thing with blood and that, purifying the blood more so, this violet water. This is a flower family. This is not Tane Mahuta issue, this is a flower, violet flower. So, maybe later on we'll have some more to talk about.